Hi everyone! In this video, I am going to show you how to read, write, and play audio files within Python. In order to do this, we'll work with a few different packages, including ipython.displaysaudio class, Librosa, and SciPy. Great, let's get started. The first thing I'll do is we'll play an audio file, and I am going to call the audio class from ipython.display. And I am going to load in an MP3 file, which is a song. And this song is Rockin' Robin by Bobby Day. So once this is loaded in, we can see we have a little player here. So if you have a Jupyter Notebook environment or you're working in Google Colab, you can call the audio class. And let's play the file now. <laughs> So we were able to successfully play this mp3 file, and the audio class can also work with different types of audio files, including WAV files. Let's get into reading an audio file into an array. So we'll take this mp3 and we'll load it into a NumPy array. And for this, we'll use the Librosa package. There are two parameters that Librosa is going to take in order for it to load in the data. The first is the type of data. So it could be a NumPy 1D array, 2D array, or these other file types. And then we also need to specify the, or we'll get return the sampling rate as well. And let's go over the definition of sampling rate, which is the number of samples of audio recorded every second. The most common sample rate for digital audio is 44,100 hertz. This means that the CT sound wave is sampled 44,100 times every second. And we'll see as we go through this, that's a significant amount of data. So let's save these into two variables. The first is I'm going to call audio array. And the second I'm going to call SR for sample rate. Next, I am going to call Librosa. And I am going to load in the MP3 file. And if you are loading in an MP3 using Librosa, you'll initially get this user warning. For Librosa, it mostly works with WAV files, but it can also work with MP3 files. It just needs to call a different package in order for it to load it in. Great. Let's take a look at the shape of the array. So if we call audio array shape, we can see that this is a lot of data that we have loaded into this array for this song, and there are over 3 million data points within the array. And we can take a look at the sample rate that was used, and we can see that it's 22,050, which is half of the typical sample rate that's used for digital audio recordings. Great. The next thing that we can do is we can actually visualize this audio array and we'll call Librosa again. This time we'll use the dot display function and we'll use a function called waveplot, putting in the audio array and then we also need to specify the sample rate. And if I run this, we see that we have our audio file visualized. So this is that the Rock and Robin song. And we can see that on the X axis, we have zero up to two minutes and 40 seconds. That's the length. Then we actually have the data points, which is the frequency that's used for all of, for the song itself. And we can see that it oscillates. So you'll have the, the singer, all, all of that is represented in these data points and it oscillates over time. And we can also take a look at the histogram version of this and we can just put in plt.hist 
to take a look at that. Specify for the audio array, and then I'll just put in the edge color as black to help distinguish the bins a bit better. Great, and we can see that for the values that compose the audio file, most of them are within this negative one tenth up to a tenth, and it falls off from there. So you'll have some more low pitched and high pitched sounds in here, but they're not as frequent as these quieter sounds in the middle. Okay, so we can also edit the audio, and because this is a NumPy array, we can just broadcast in from the array and create a new variable. So I'll call this edited audio, and what I'll do is I'll take the audio array, and for the values, I'll square all of them. And let's take a listen to the edited audio to see how it to hear how it sounds put in the same sample rate and then run this okay so let's play the audio file and we'll hear a significant difference between the original file and this array that we edited And we can hear that from this edited array that the notes are and sounds are far more high pitched and distorted relative to the original file, which makes sense given that we're taking the square of the original array. Okay, so let's move on to creating a audio file. And we can do this by just generating a random data set. So what I'll do is I'll create a data set, a variable called unidata. And this is just going to sample from a uniform distribution. And like before, I'll call the audio class. I'll input the unidata variable as the data. And then for the sample rate, I am going to set it for the typical 44,100. And let's give this a listen. So we can hear that this is static and it's given that all the values are uniformly distributed, you'll have the same chance of getting a low pitch, high pitch, no pitch frequency and once you save all that information into a variable you'll have a almost ran a random noise that's static and we can visualize this using the labrosa wave plot again this time we'll just put in the unit data in And we can see that this does look like as, as if it came from a uniform distribution where you have datas, data points from one to negative one, and there is basically no oscillation relative to what we saw here where there were some patterns and you'd have far fewer high pitched notes and low pitched notes and you'd have most of the data points in the middle. And this isn't true of this uniform distribution where we have the static and there's a even probability of seeing any of these data points between negative one and one. And we can also just quickly plot this out on a histogram. And given our histogram, it looks very similar to our wave plot. And this makes sense, again, because this is coming from a uniform distribution. 
Okay, so next I am going to highlight a great article by Nishu Jain, which I used his source code to make this song. And he did a very good job explaining this. So I, again, want to highlight that all of this code is by this author, Nishu Jain. And you can check out his original so source code on Towards Data Science. So the first thing that he did is he created this, this function called get wave, and it's going to take the frequency and time duration for a wave as the input, and it will return a NumPy array of all the values at all the points in time. And we have the fun function written out here where we're going to take that ampl amplitude, multiply it by the sine, two pi, multiplied by the frequency and the time. And that will return us our wave for each of those points. So we'll run this and then we'll call this eventually down further down. Next, I got some frequencies from this website by Brian H. Sweets. And I'll just load this in really quickly and I'll explain what they are. So here we have the frequencies of piano notes and their keys. So each note corresponds to a certain frequency and we're going to use this in Mr. Jane's functions and we'll create a simple song and we'll see how that's done. So we can see that the notes start out low when it gets to C, C sharp. And by the time we get to A sharp, Eight, the frequency gets very high and it's very high pitched. The next function that was created is a get piano notes function. So it is going to find the notes given that are called and the, fr the frequencies that come with those notes. Finally, this is where the actual song comes in. So in this function, it is going to get the piano notes, so the C sharp, A sharp, it will retrieve all those. Next, it will use some um, list comprehension to write the song itself, and it will concatenate the song so that it can be played, and it will finally return the song. So here I went in and I got all the notes for a song called Fade Into Darkness by Avicii and we'll play it once we're done. So these are the notes that I input. You can input your own notes if you have a song that you want to code out using this function, and then we'll play it. Okay, so I'm going to run this one. I oh, need to run this cell, run this cell. And finally, we're going to write the song given the and we're going to call it fade into darkness and we're going to make it a wave file, put in the sample rate, which is the typical 44,100 and set the data type to a integer 16. So let's run this. And finally, let's call the audio class and run this. And let's check this out. And this is a pretty cool set of code. Again, many thanks to uh, Mr. Jane for writing this. It is pretty awesome that you can do this. If you're a big fan of music and coding, I highly recommend checking out his code and playing around with it. You can put in whatever song that you want to hear in and code it out and then play it yourself within Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook. Thanks for watching. Here are the references and additional learning. Again, the code for the piano keys came from Nishu Jane's article, How to Play Music Using Mathematics in Python. Highly recommend checking out this article, along with the other articles I have listed here. 
I have the documentation for Librosa and ipython.display here. And there's also this great site, Jup Musical Information Retrieval, that shows how to work with audio files and music within Python. And they use Jupyter for, for all the coding. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or GitHub. Thanks everyone for watching and happy coding.